well. Hello there, how are you? Welcome to Ensuring Your Well-Being. I am Dennis James, the biking dancing insurance man with various insurance planning. I am the independent insurance advisor and I'm gonna be bringing a really interesting topic today and uh, you're gonna enjoy it because you're gonna learn something uh, that takes place every year. And what that is, uh, this is November 7th and guess what? It is called National Long-Term Care Awareness Month. So they have that every year, and the reason is they want people to be in tune with long-term care insurance and how why it's so important to uh, understand. And so it is to observe, celebrate, reflect, you know. Uh, now, a lot of people don't know what long-term care insurance is, what that really comes down to is as we get older, you don't have to be, but in most cases, it is where if we live a long life, we become fragile, and sooner or later, uh, we may need some help, all right? Uh, if you look at what's going on here, this is 2024, I see a lot of, uh, and I'm sure you do, independent a living studios going on, uh, assisted living facilities. And that means that with 10,000 baby boomers born every day, uh, followed by Gen Zs and millennials, um, if you don't die, uh, and eventually you will, but you, you, know, you live a long life, you, you're going to need some kind of extended care planning. You know, that doesn't always have to be right. It can happen at a any age, right? With MS, ALS, you know, a bad accident where you need help. And so anyhow, I uh, was reflecting on this and I'm thinking, you know, uh, why they pick November for awareness with long-term care insurance nationally. And, uh, November, December is normally, right, when we're getting together with friends and family, you know, uh, during the holidays, and um, we're taking some time and we're reflecting on, you know, the past, the present, and, you know, what's going on in the future. We don't know what the future brings, all right, uh, but at the same time, right, we're going to have discussions, and everybody's at a different stage in their life. Uh, but life insurance, long-term care insurance, annuities, uh, those are all things that should be important in your planning. All right, when it comes to long-term care insurance, just so you know, I mean, you can get a plan all the way up to, well, really, up to 100 but like uh, I'll be talking about traditional plans. Those are normally at about age 79. And uh, a lot of the other plans like uh, hybrid life or those usually can go right to about 85, you know, uh, just depending on the carrier. And then there's some annuities that can go to age 89. And uh, there's also this membership plan that uh, doesn't really matter. It's a home health care plan. It goes over 100. But <clears throat> so, you know, here's the thing, you know, when you're talking about, you know, because we're going to have good days, happy days, sad days, not so good days. And um, so... You know, things you have to ask, you know, what is it? Uh, a lot of times they'll use the term uh, extended care planning versus long-term care planning. And it, it all means the same thing, right? But a lot of people, when you think of long-term care insurance, you think in the nursing homes. Well, the reality is when you have a plan, it keeps, keeps you out of nursing home, even though uh, it does cover it, if it when you have any kind of a comprehensive plan. All right, you know, and, and there's questions that you have to think about, right? You know, uh, you know, if there is an extended care event, right? 
uh, who's going to t- who's taking care of you? You know, who's taking care of your mom or your dad or your grandma, or your grandpa? Who's who's doing them right if they need help? If they need help with, uh, you know, getting around, so that could you know that could be just. Uh, the activities of daily living, right? Think of like bathing, dressing, eating, toileting, continence, um, <clears throat> transferring, right? These are things that we do every day, but eventually, right, when you need assistance with two of the, six of those you need, that's where a long-term care insurance plan uh, will start paying. Or cognitive, right? We also under- know that... Um, with dementia, Alzheimer's, right? Um, and that is, I just had somebody last month, Deborah Ross, talk about that. That's uh, on my website right now. And uh, she was an expert on explaining that, all right? But that's uh, the other way where you qualify for a long-term care insurance plan. You know, because it becomes real, right? When, uh, you know, you're getting... Well, a lot of times during the holidays when, is when there's a discussion about that, right? Uh, kind of like I mentioned, who's going to do that? Now, you know, it may not happen to you, all right? But if it did happen to you, what's your plan, all right? Uh, can somebody lift you up if you fell, right, off the floor? Can your wife do that if you're in your 80s, 90? You don't have to be that age, but I'm just saying. Who's going to do that, right? So, you know, these are things we don't want to look at or talk about, think about it. But um, we also have to be real with uh, our, 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 you know, who we are and our loved ones, right? Because what ends up happening, it becomes emotionally, physically, financially a burden on everyone, right? And so um, those are, are, are things to, to look at. You know, a lot of times we'll say, well, my kids, well, well, Depends, all right? Where's your kids live? Are they living around you? Or are they living in another state? Uh, you know, do you want them? You know, if you have three kids, who's going who's gonna to do it? Are they all going to take turns? Do you know that for sure? Do you want them to do that? All right. Uh, they become caregivers, right? And so, you know, sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. But over over a period of time, it can can get really tough, and um, so you know that's the things you have to consider. You know uh, who's going to be an informal caregiver? You know, is it going to be a friend or a family member? Right? Suppose you're a single person. I mean, who's going to take care of you? Is uh, you know, you, do you have somebody that that is going to take care of you, help you? Uh, you know, those are things, you know, that you have to think about, right? So when we talk about national long-term care insurance, where you know, it, it's to raise awareness on the significant impact it makes on, on people, right? So, you know, when your loved ones don't have any choice but to take care of you, right? Um, because they're going to if they love you and vice versa, so... You know, those are, that's why you think about planning, and it's always better sooner than later. Uh, You know, 70% of men and women that turn age 65 today, uh, right, 70%, they're going to need some kind of long-term care insurance. And, um, right, so, you know, and that's, again, you know, you have to understand. I I was going to talk to you a little bit about the cost of care, all right, just to bring some awareness to a lot of people don't know, uh, you could go to variousinsuranceplanning.com, variousinsuranceplanning.com. I do have the, the care information down there, but just to kind of give you an idea, and this is like a national, uh, these, these rates that I'm going to give you. But as an example, if you have a homemaker service where somebody's going to be coming in, and this is based on uh, over, you know, 44 hours per week where someone's coming in and uh, doing homemaker service. And really what that is, that's where they're cleaning the house. Uh, you know, they're cooking some meals for you. You know, they could be taking you to the bank or to the grocery store, uh, cleaning, that type of thing. 
uh, the the cost is around by fifty seven hundred dollars uh, a year. Uh, I'm sorry, a year per month. I mean, if you add that up, that's around sixty eight grand per year. All right, so that can be expensive. Now, if you need a home help, homemaker, home aid. So, and that's where, remember, I mentioned to you about the, where you need some help with uh, activities of daily living. You know, maybe that could be the, the bathing or you need somebody to help feed you, uh, right? Or go into the bathroom, that type of thing. All right, that's where home health aides come in, right? That's where they're going to give you assistance uh, to make sure you don't hurt yourself. That's like hands-on assistance, um, and that's right around $76,000, you know, depending again, what state you're in, but that's what it would be for 40 hours, 44 hours a week over a one year period. All right. Now adult daycare centers, a lot of that becomes, uh, a, a, a nice benefit. I also have somebody that had talked, uh, about adult daycare centers, quality, uh, daycare and that's uh jackie she runs one of them and her cost all right is 125 bucks a day all right and that's where you know you're taking uh you know a loved one and you're dropping them off for the day all right and usually that could be anywhere from nine to four and that's where they're gonna you know feed them and kind of like look after them have them play games get artistic that type of thing now, so if it's 125 a day, that's $2,500 a week, or add that up, <clears throat> all right, that's 30000 bucks a year, all right? Now, that's not bad, but you got to consider your time going there, you know, uh, every day. And um, now, assisted living, all right, so those vary, but right around 50 three to six grand per year right in there could be uh, a lot of times that's for for a a private room or it could be where you're sharing it with somebody Uh, those rooms vary all right but that doesn't count for a lot of other things that might count for your meals and that type of thing in your room some of the activities that take place I know like as an example my own my own mother was at a well, independent living to assisted living to um, basically memory care where she ended up dying, uh, you know. And I realized that really got my attention, uh, how expensive that can be. You know, I guess the blessing behind that, my mom had a good pension, a good pension and um, you know, and put away some money so she was able to have those services taken care of unfortunately i was not in long-term care insurance at the plant and nobody ever you know approached me on it so i didn't know anything about it for me or my mom uh, or my dad for that fact and that also goes with my mother-in-law right so all those get very expensive now if you get into nursing homes like i said you want to stay out of nursing homes uh, you know, but it, it, if you're having all that home health care services, like I mentioned, you know, that's 65 to 75 grand today in today's dollars. Nursing homes, you're looking at, if you're looking at a semi-private room, it's right around uh, 102 to 104,000. Uh, and it can go anywhere from 110 to 120,000 in a private room in a nursing care and only certain ones qualify, you know, when it comes to Medicaid and that type of thing, um, you know, so they, and that is, you know, all those types of services add up, right? So that's what Jen's worth, but I mentioned how you could go to my website and I do have those services where they break down for you. So, you know, things to consider. All right, now, as far as long-term care insurance available, they're in, uh, available for the individual and the work site. You know, I mentioned um, that there's a lot of carriers today 
that, especially because of the baby boomers, Gen Zs, millennials uh, that uh, are in the market. So you have a lot of good options. There's something that is affordable for everybody. If you're dealing with an expert that focuses on long-term care insurance, especially if he's an independent insurance advisor, he should be able to give you a lot of good options based off your needs. All right, so um, also work sites. You know, there's been like 10 life insurance carriers or carriers, long-term care, that have come into the market here for 2024 because of the need. And so one of the things you want to think about, uh, different types of, uh, there's long-term care insurance. There's what they call a tradition, all right? It's kind of like, uh, those are really good plans. They're comprehensive. And uh, so it's going to cover you for at-home services. It's going to, you know, uh, any kind of facility. That means independent facility, assisted memory care and even nursing community, the adult daycare center. It's kind of like um, you carry auto insurance, homeowner's insurance. It's the same thing. Traditional plans uh, usually are the most cost-effective. There is underwriting on all these types of plans that I'm discussing. Uh, but And it also has what they call partnership state qualified. So um, I'm going to have a separate... <laughs> conversation at that at another time with a podcast. Uh, but really what that is, let's just say you have a $300,000 uh, uh, benefit, right? So you, and you, you use that whole $300,000 of benefit, and then you, you're going to go to qualify for Medicaid, right? So what happens is that $300 uh, will, will a uh, be part of your estate, all right? So, the, you know, the, you don't have to spend down to use that. So that's going to be part of uh, your assets that you get to keep. And you really only do that with a uh, traditional standalone policy, all right? So real nice benefit there uh, that a lot of people take for granted or don't understand. You know, I mean, you have auto homeowners, liability insurance. Think about it. You know, when did you use that last? All right. What's the chances of using uh, a long-term care insurance? Uh, you know, I, I mentioned that, right? 75% of the people will. That turns 65. So I'm sorry, 70%. Um, then there's what they call... Different names for them, uh, you know, it's called asset-based uh, life insurance with long-term care insurance. It's hybrid life, so that's with long-term care insurance. Uh, they call them link benefits. That's where you have life insurance linked to uh, long-term care insurance. Now, those are nice uh, because you're going to use one or the other, right? So you get life insurance. And you also get either it's going to be a long-term care insurance rider or it's going to be what they call extension of benefits, all right, which is for the long-term care insurance. Now, when you go to use those plans, uh, if you never use the long-term care insurance and let's just say you have a $500,000 policy, well, $500,000 goes towards your beneficiary, right? You die, you got protection Right now, you keep in mind you're paying for life insurance when you have these types of plans. All right, so sometimes if you don't need life insurance, just depending, uh, usually traditional plans can make sense, right, for people that qualify for any of these plans. Uh, let's see, and then they have the. L so if you, as an example, let's just say you have like that five hundred thousand, you use two fifty, two hundred fifty thousand towards. Uh, your long-term care rider, um, right? Now you got 250000 of life insurance, but you also use 250000 towards your long-term care insurance or your rider. You know, then you can have what they call an extension of benefits. You could maybe, because uh, you're always going to use the life insurance portion first, all right? Uh, 
you know, unless there's a residual, sometimes you can have like, you know, where it'll be for 25000 no matter. Even if you use everything, you still have 25000 of death benefit. And it depends on the insurance carrier when I'm talking about all this, all right? Um, what else? You know, a lot of these have what they call chronic, chronic illness riders, critical care riders, chronic. So, you know, I mentioned the... ADLs, right, activities of daily living or cognitive. Uh, you know, they have some of these riders where you pay for pay for them or you, uh, you don't pay for it. But if upon a, you don't really know how much you're going to get, though, if you go on claim, right? So you will pay, and it's going to be based off uh, when you – uh, are on that, you know, you qualify for using the long-term care insurance. That chronic illness rider can kick in, and you just don't know what your death benefit is going to be, right? So it's based off your age, your gender, uh, and when when you have this, uh, when you qualify. So sometimes that cannot be so good, but it's better than nothing. All right, that's what I would say about that. You have to, you know, your insurance advisor should be able to explain all these different good options for you based off uh, affordability and, you know, what you feel the need and what you qualify for. Uh, Then there's annuities. All right. Now, annuities, um, uh, the thing with them, you don't, you know, your health can be kind of, you know, maybe you're not in real good health. Right. Uh, So it's a way of taking uh, some of your non-qualified money, if you if you do that and you roll it into a tax-qualified annuity, that would for lo- be lo- for long-term care insurance, the protection, Pension Protection Act. You would not pay taxes on it, but you're using it as long as you use it for qualified long-term care insurance expenses. All right. So if you have a, a non-qualified plan, you're not going to really use it. And let's just say, uh, you know, you started at 100000 and it grew to 150000 uh, When it's set up as a qualified annuity, the cool thing there is you're not going to pay taxes on it, right? Because so, you normally would when you go to take that money out of that annuity if you didn't, right? But if it's money that you don't think you're going to be passing on to loved ones, beneficiaries, you don't need it for your, your lifestyle, uh, it's, it's a great feature that's going to give you some long-term care insurance. And some of these annuities, all right, you can have uh, different nursing confinement riders on it. You're going to, you know, pay a certain amount for it. But um, those are riders that can be attached to your annuity. And um, let's see, and then there's short-term home health, short, short-term plans, and that could be like where you just have a home health care plan, or it could be strictly a facility type plan. Uh, uh, those are normally a year, but if you you don't use it, all right, uh, or let's just say you don't use it for uh, 180 days, it, it will restore all the benefits of it. Uh, a lot of advantage of those types of plans is. Um, Easy to qualify, you know, two or three medical questions, maybe two. And uh, basically the questions are, you know, are you uh, in a nursing home, you know, or do you have dementia? You wouldn't qualify then, but uh, it's very easy to qualify. And the other thing is they're very cost effective. A lot of those plans you can get up to age 85 and they become affordable, you know, and you know, as I talk to you about this, really, what's really important is having something in place, right? Um, think about it. Insurance carriers, right? You might as well put them on the hook for it, right? It's pennies on the dollar what you're spending. And if you don't believe me, just get get some, uh, have some, uh, some professional run you some rates and they can show you if you, you know, how much, if you, you know, you're paying in and what kind of benefit you have, right? We know that uh, insurance carriers are very smart. They know what the actuaries are. They know who's going to go on claim, who isn't. And so uh, why not utilize it? You know, 
people that have a lot of money, right? They use other people's money, other, you know, carriers, et cetera. So just a food for thought there. And they, a lot of these plans have some kind of what they call care coordination, right? So uh, you go on claim or a friend or a loved one, uh, right? You're going to want to know where I can go, you know? So they, so as an example, let's just say you have a long-term care insurance plan. All these carriers, they have uh, what they call care coordination where you could, uh, once you put in the claim like that, uh, they're going to they're gonna put somebody that can help you uh, with all those services, right? Because when you're having emotional, phys- financial, physical problems, you might as well have somebody that's going to assist you. So there's care coordination is a big deal. And, you know, there's a lot of independent people, too, that are out, um, that are would be around you that can help you also when it comes to, you know, Getting, you know, finding a facility, you know, that makes sense because that's what they do. They're experts, were, you know, with that. Uh, all right. I, I wanted to mention something about, I'm going to wrap this up pretty quick. I mean, things are going quicker than I thought. Uh, benefit periods, uh, you know, that, these are the things you think about is two, three, four, five-year benefit period, you know, so... Uh, there's one insurance carrier, a couple insurance carriers that'll cover you for life, uh, you know, and then you want to know the amount, all right? So as an example, right, we were talking about that a little earlier, right? So if you need, um, let's just say you have a, you know, you have 6000 a month, right, and over 6000 a month benefit, and you have that over a one-year benefit benefit period, that's going to give you $72,000 per year. All right. So if that's the case, 72,000, so you could pick, pick a three-year benefit period or four or five, right? So if you pick the three-year, right, you're going to have 260,000 benefit that can be used for any kind of home care, assisted living, or any of the facility care. Okay, adult care centers. A lot of times uh, you you would have an elimination period calendar year. So what that means is that uh, once you go on claim, you got like kind of like health insurance, right? You got to wait elimination period 90 days and then it kicks in. Uh, but once you go on claim, so if you, you know, start on day one, well, once you, after 90 calendar days, you're going to be covered. All right. Um, they also have 180 day, but 90 is the most popular. Then you can get inflation on it. Inflation's gonna, you know, usually that's gonna be a two, three, uh, four, two, three, five percent, right? So that keeps up. So let's just say you're taking out a claim today, and you're, you know, just say 40 years old. All right, you don't go on claim for, right, 20 years, 30 years. Well. By having inflation right around there, uh, it's going to keep up with the cost of dollars, uh, you know, 30 years from now, as an example. You have to look at the cost on that, though, right? The bottom line is having a good benefit amount in place. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're just, you know, you're going to self-fund some of it, which is fine, right? A lot of, a lot of people do, do that. Why not? Right. But you want to, you know, the, the, the thing is right without a plan, then you, Hey, you go on claim, then you have to ask yourself and really be real about it. Okay. What am I going to liquidate first? Right. Is that going to be the 401k? What's it going to be? All right. And we, you know, we talked about the cost, uh, on that, right. It's today's dollars, right? I mean, you're looking at 60 to a hundred thousand dollars per year. So, you know, Uh, And you have to think of all the other things, you know, when you don't have a plan, right? It's a dollar, every dollar you spend uh, is going to go towards um, care. And, you know, when you have a plan in place, you, instead of your loved ones, like your kids taking care of you, okay, instead of that, you're going to have the support. Your kids will be the support of it versus being the caregiver, Right. And a lot of times that can be challenging, obviously. And 
when we talk about families breaking apart is and a lot of that is because of that. Hey, you know, Mary's taking care of, uh, taking care of me, but you know, Jim and John aren't doing anything, you know, right? So it, it gets sticky that way, right? We, we don't think so, but the reality, it, it happens more than we would want it to happen. Uh, you know, all right, I talked about that. Now, also worksite benefits, all right? That's another thing. Uh, those kind of plans can be portable. Uh, they can be a guarantee issue or simplified issue, uh, you can, you know, let's just say your employer, you know, a lot of those are those hybrid life with the long-term care insurance riders, and they can be very cost effective. Uh, you know, there are tax benefits to all this, especially if you're in business, there's tax benefits. I'm not going to get into all that. I'll do that another time, but there's tax deductions for that. All right. So especially if you're S corp, C corp, that type of thing, um, you know, based off age or where you're at. Great way to in insure yourself using the business, um, you know, as a uh, above the line tax deduction, that type of, as a soap prop and that type of thing. But, you know, talk to your advisor. You could go to my website. You could contact me. I have lots of information on it right here. All right. So, uh, all right, I think that is going to be about it. I think one of the things I'm going to wrap it up, I would just say I have uh, a lot of experts. If you go to www.variousinsuranceplanning.com, you could talk to um, experts that talk about cogn uh, Alzheimer's, the home health care, um, you know, life insurance, long-term care insurance, annuities, uh, if you need a good account, you want CPA, you want information on that, you know, as an individual or business owner, they're on there. Uh, home health care agency, uh, adult daycare centers, uh, wellness. You got the bike and dance insurance man that talks a little bit about wellness from his history of uh, martial arts and ballroom dancing. Uh you know, uh, there's ways of staying healthy and fit and by doing what you should, you know, doing. And I had somebody uh, talk on nutrition and cancer, so all those things. Uh, let people know about the website, variousinsuranceplanning.com. And it's a great place to go for information. Uh, we're there to help people, all right? That's what I want you to get and understand, all right? So thanks for tuning in. Uh, wish you a, a, a blessed day, and uh, God bless. Take care.